spirit of sloth. <laughs> You guys have no idea. It better be. It's a good thing that old girl died in my mother's heart. I wanted to. I don't care that she was 78. I wanted to slap her over that pew. I, I just wanted to just whack. <laughs> just <laughs> we worked so hard for three months to get this little boy to come in because he's in an abusive family and the little girls knew it. Mm-hmm. And we were just trying to get him in the fold and so we could show him kindness and and not for him to have something positive in his life instead of being in a gang. Mm-hmm. And this 70, I mean, she's either 72 or 78 years old, little miss I've tithed all my life. So I get to decide who comes to this church. <clears throat> People, okay? Did you know that little boy didn't come back? But I left that church shortly after that. Uh, not because of her, but uh, because the youth pastors was helping my teenagers go behind their parents' back and do all kinds of crazy stuff. And I'm like, this is not going to blow up and get on me. (laughs) Because now that I know about it, I'm a part of it, right? So uh, when you're taking my teenagers to private houses and giving them alcohol, taking the R-rated movies, and you're letting them go upstairs with each other to make out, because that's what teenagers do. You know, I got to clock out, guys. I've just got to go. So I went to the pastor and I told him what was going on, and that and they were they were also ex-Catholic, so they were teaching a lot of stuff there that didn't really line up with our doctrines. Which, by the way, really that's good because they don't need to be praying to dead people. Uh, I'm just saying they don't need to be praying to the saints. Uh, I think Jesus said something about praying in His name, did? Yeah, there you go. He's the only dead person we're supposed to, and he ain't dead no more. That's why we're supposed to pray to him. He forever lives to make intercession for us. He's not dead. He's alive. He's at the right-hand side of the Father. Anyway, uh, so anyway, I went in and I told the pastor I had to step down and leave. And, uh, and I told him that I just could, well, watch. So he tells everybody that I stepped down because I wanted to start doing a different kind of outreach. So anyway, uh, so that's when I left the church. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know what, I'm, I, I've just got to clock out on you guys. And I went down to another church and I became a youth pastor leader down there. And I got the little boy back in the church. That's good. And he actually got saved, born again, and he just started doing some radical changes. And he moved to California to live with his aunt. Wow. Yeah, so I think his life turned around on a dime. But anyway, so what was I fussing about before? Okay, the new man and the new heart, and we get a new, we we become a new man, okay? Uh, That is actually the real gospel. Okay? Amen. False religion tells us to go tell people they need to say a sinner's prayer so they don't go to hell. Okay. Let's see if I can find a screw. Well, I'll tell you what. All, all y'all, y'all, y'all aren't your average Christians, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm not even going to, I'm not going to do the work. I want one of y'all to show me in your Bible a sinner's prayer. I want you to show me in your Bible a salvation prayer that is our typical sinner's prayer. <clears throat> well, I'd like I to just bring want up scripture and verse. I'd like to bring up Romans ten, though. A sinner's prayer. A sinner's, a sinner's prayer. prayer. I'd like to bring up Romans ten, though. I think is a good point. Do what? Romans ten. Uh, I had on the wall. Oh, that's confess with your mouth. Yes, Romans ten nine. Romans ten nine. Yes. So, um, is that a sinner's prayer? Well, I would. Yeah, I'd like to discuss it because I. Yeah, no, it's a good question because I think that it gets um, twisted into a sinner's prayer, where it says, "If thou confess with thy mouth the Lord is Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved." For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For scripture saith, Whoever whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Um, and when when I when we I think what happens is this can be awesome testimony by the way. Um, 
conceived that it says that you can invite Jesus into your heart. That's where I believe that people get this sinner's prayer. Hey, let me just, just, just invite Jesus into your heart and he'll change you. Yeah. So I think it's a really, I think it'd be really good That's to discuss. That's kind of good because we don't have any responsibility. Right. I think Save it's kind of get this. interesting to discuss this um, thoroughly because, you know, as we, as we say, there's no sinner's prayer. And, and I think typically what I've seen or heard on the streets is, you know, hey, just invite Jesus into your heart and he'll come in and change you. Now, well, I don't believe that's, you know, that, that we see that sinner's prayer, right? So, no, Jesus is just going to come in and take a whirlwind. I'm going to play the devil's advocate here a little bit because I have heard a couple testimonies where people do say something and they invite Jesus into their heart and they don't see anything right away. But then you come back and like six or seven months later, they will testify that Jesus actually came in and did something in yeah. their heart. Now, so, and I'm playing doubles up because I, I don't believe that that is the all and, you know, and me and I agree with you that we can't say a sinner's prayer. So I, I think my question goes back to Robbie's or my, the topic goes back to what Robbie was saying is that um, people don't want to surrender their lives because they think God will ask them to do something they don't want to do. And I would go over more over and say, people don't want to surrender their lives because they don't want to give up what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They don't want to change. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want to change drinking or pornography right. or they don't want to change. And I think when we get down into the nitty gritty, it's like how, because you said it here, what, what, what is salvation? What about salvation? Are we, are we sharing this right? You know, so I see both ends of this. Yeah. And, and as I always want to continue to learn, I've always been against that quick little sinner's prayer. But I have heard a couple, couple testimonies like, oh, this guy a long time ago asked me mm -hmm. to invite Jesus into my heart. Nothing happened for months, and then all of a sudden, I remembered that, right. and I felt Jesus working in my heart. And so I'm putting my foot in my mouth. I'm like, okay. Um, and so I think what it is is, and I think that's what this whole group yeah. is. We're all on fire that's to share true. the gospel, to to, right. to bring people into the kingdom. That's what we're here yes. for. So that that that's just kind of what I want to propose is like, how do we get people to realize that that for one, I think my personal experience <coughs> is that God loves me. Because like you said, people don't really believe God loves them. I've heard people on the street all the time. Yeah. You know, I'll be like, oh, Jesus loves you. No, he doesn't. I'm a sinner. And so how do we get people, you know, and it's, it's going to be different every time. But I think it's a mm -hmm. great point. It's a great topic. How do we introduce people to Christ? You know, I think healing has been one of my favorite, and I know your favorite avenues of introducing people to Christ. Um, and I've seen people come to Jesus and they didn't get healed right there, but they were like, you were so adamant about this. I just want to know more about it anyway. Um, okay. so without going in circles and stuff, but I think that it's like, you know, how can you bring this to the, t or what could you, and, uh, bring up Faye with like, you know, people say, Oh, God doesn't love me. I even heard one of my new favorite pastors saying that God lets people suffer for a while to, to humble us. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, because that's what we do with our kids, right? Right, and that would be my first, you know, thing. Oh, yeah, my, you know, child has a broken arm, so I squeeze on a little once in a while. And, but anyway, so I, I don't want to get too far. But, but right, okay, so the sinner's prayer. So Romans 10, 9, you know, and I think when you read it and you read the content and not the context, it's you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And like you were saying, that day in the hospital, your heart, your, the, old man, the old man died. That's your heart was changed radically. Well, you know what um, I like is when Todd White talks about his salvation. You know, he he he's like ready to commit suicide. Yeah, he's yeah. so sick and tired yeah. and sick. Yeah, I don't want my life, life, life anymore. Suicide. And then Dan said, and he well, comes in, well, away. good, you're ready. We can, God can work with that. Yeah. Did you yeah. know not everybody's ready to be saved? Well, and that's the good. And they will say a sinner's prayer to you to get you to leave them alone. Right. Yeah. And they didn't believe in their heart. Yeah. Okay. Now watch. There are some people that'll say a sinner's prayer. That actually do the "I'm sorry, I'm a sinner" part of that, yeah. And they don't really understand about making Jesus their Lord, but they really do want their life to go away and the change in their lives. And right. I think those are the people that kind of move forward with it, and and they do change. But I think the reason that we see some people, you know, I mean, you see somebody a few years later and, you know, nothing really happened that day, years back, but something finally did happen. Well, well what if it took them that long 
to find out the truth about what salvation really is. And it wasn't just that sinner's prayer. Maybe what we're teaching people is so ineffective right then and there. So we basically left that, them in hell for three or four years. Right there. Because that's, we made them think that saying the sinner's prayer that's was, the, was what it took. That's it right there. And then later, as God's grace was working in their lives, it finally caught up to them to a degree. I think the biggest thing, honestly, is that we teach people the wrong thing when we talk to them about salvation. Right. Because okay. this guy in Jackson uh, Hospital, when I stopped by there two weeks ago, can you imagine how many people, now he's 53, so you know, and his mom's a Christian, you know how many people's talked to him about getting saved? Yeah, did you go into that here? You told me on the phone, but... I mean, that, before, can't even imagine. I right. can't even... I mean, I'm... You know, and his mom... Now, look, the girl that talked to me about him said that she didn't think he believed he was a believer. But now the mom is like, oh, yeah, you know, we're Christians and stuff, okay? So, so... Okay. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, now, she really is more than just your common go-to-church kind of girl, okay? She really is. But what she was saying is that she believed Michael was. Okay. But <laughs> right, okay. I mean, later after I left that hospital, he flat out told her, he said, you know, Mama, I think I was an atheist before that woman walked in there. How old is Michael again? 53. Right. Just He's... His it, mother, a lot of times mothers, yeah, you know, yeah. rose-colored glasses. Is this I the know, same I man know. that was yeah. proclaiming Jesus afterwards in the hospital? Oh, yeah, 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 this is the guy, this okay. is the guy. So there's but, a heart change. There's a heart change, but see, see, his mom, well, he said that he knew about Jesus, and when I got there, he said something about that he was a believer, okay? So, so some say we're not clear about what it really means to be a believer, and people are confused. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got bullfrogs clucking like chickens because they think that they're chickens, and they're not. They're bullfrogs, guys. They, they have not changed, and it's really because we've taught them the wrong message. We're not teaching the right message. Amen. We have made salvation about a destination. That's right. And that's a snare and a trap. It's a snare. And look, is it good to know where you're going to go before you get there? Yes, I always like to know that. But what I'm saying, we tell them to say a sinner's prayer and nothing, we don't even give them an expectation of anything changing. We just give them their get out of hell free card, you're good to go. It's like Andrew said, I had their scouts. You know, I've been out scout hunting today. Got me 30 of them, right? And, and we're not even, they're not expecting a change in their life. And that's why three and five and ten years later, and even some of them never change, because a month later they're like going, oh, that's just a bunch of crap. And they don't even look for God in that anymore. So this guy, I go in there, and I start talking to him about how I was an atheist. And the next day when I walked out of that hospital room, I was a completely different person. And I, and I knew that I was a different person because God ripped my spice rack straight off the wall. There was no more cussing. I didn't even want to. And man, I was, I was in the mafia. You think I didn't cuss? I used about 20 cuss words per sentence. I bet you could cuss the crumb off a bumper. I taught people how to effectively cuss people. Okay? I mean, I am just was... Were, were, do you think... Fine. Were you at, the, like, at a low point? Obviously, your mom was dying or passing away, were you at a low point in your life or were you, what are you? And that's something else let's talk about. You know, Jesus said it. He said it's more, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. You know why? Rich people don't need nothing. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I tell you why, yeah, I've been both. Right, yeah. I've been so stinking poor, I've lived on Kroger brand chicken noodle soup for three months because I couldn't afford Campbell's. I either had to eat or buy gas to go to work so I could eat the next week. So for three months I ate chicken noodle soup. I did not have a weight problem. Now I might have had a high sodium problem, <laughs> but I didn't have a weight problem, okay? 
So, uh, so I've been really, really poor, okay? Really poor. I know what poor is, guys, okay? More than one time, I've been really poor. And I've been way up here, like more than one time. Because I jump off the high dive. Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to would take money and invest it, and my idea was, it yeah, don't big deal. If I don't make it, I'll just do something else. I'll try something else. So I never lived under the fear mm -hmm. of going broke, because I'd already been broke. Mm -hmm. I know Croker has chicken, chicken noodle noodles soup. Too. <laughs> <Idiot>. <laughs> yeah. So I would just go and, and jump in things, and if I made it big, that's okay. If I didn't make it, it was okay. So. But I do understand what Jesus meant by the eye of the needle. Did you know when my mother got sick, I had three accountants counting money because I didn't have time. Mm -hmm. I was too busy making it. I had a company that made about $5 million a year. Mm -hmm. and that didn't even count my five restaurants. Literally, I had so much money I couldn't even count it so you coming in. you were financially low, were you? Right. I moved in my ego house yeah. And I worked so much, I'd lived there for two years and I hadn't hung any pictures on the wall. A, I never was at home, and B, I never had time to call somebody to come and decorate it because I had to be there. So you see how crazy life can get? But I can tell you, I wasn't looking for Jesus in any of that. When you're driving an $80,000 Mercedes Benz, you're not, looking, you're for not looking for Jesus at the stop sign, guys. Yeah. That's what he meant by it's hard for a rich man to go through the eye of a needle. I mean, a camel, because, guys, I'm telling you, rich people aren't looking for answers. They are deceived and think they already have the answers. But they're lonely. I wasn't lonely. No. I had a great marriage, and I still do. Yeah. Keith and I are just like that, yeah, man. It's good. I had money. I had a great, in fact, I've had people offer well, you ought to come to church sometimes. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's, that's good to hear. Uh, no. <laughs> I got money, I'm happy. No, well, that's good to hear. That you know, my hearing, perspective you know. of church people, and I'm sorry, I'll apologize on the front end of this, is when I would see a church person and they want me to come and hang out with their little group of people and be one of them, right? I'm thinking, now wait a minute. Great. Your divorce rate is 2% higher than atheist. <laughs> At least I can make a decision and stick with it. Oh, man. Now, that's cold, but it's true. Go look, look it up. You know, I'm thinking, why would I want to be one of you when I'm going to risk my marriage hanging out with you? I'm happy. I get on airplanes and go scuba diving and having a great time while you're mad on Sunday arguing about the carpet. <laughs> So if you were rich, I'm in the ocean blowing bubbles, having the time of my life, and I'm not. I know that's mean, and I'm sorry. It's just no, part that's of the good. Girl it's good to get the truth. Over. Then you know, here's an analogy. It's like me walking by a hot tub, right? And you got seven or eight people sitting in it, and they're going, <coughs> <coughs> and they're like, "Come on, come over here!" And, <laughs> and you're like, "I'm, I'm good." <laughs> I'm all good, guys. Thank you anyway. You know, they're arguing with each other. 